Hello and welcome back to another game dev tutorial. This is John from Lost Relic Games and today we will be looking at how to generate a dynamic grid in uh, Unity using C Sharp. So let's open Unity and get started. We'll create a new project, making sure the 2D template is selected to get the 2D tooling. And we'll call this creating a dynamic grid. So the first thing we'll want to do when Unity opens is to create a few more folders. So we'll create one called Sprites and another one called Resources. And this will be the folder where Unity loads its um, assets from that we'll use to make the grid. Uh, so you'll need to get your hands on a tile. I've got a grass tile here that's in a pixel art style, 128 by 128. Um, pixels. You can use various sizes, but I recommend using something to the power of two. So drag this into your sprites folder. Well, firstly, we'll click the tile and make some calibrations here. Um, so we'll change the pixel per unit size to 128 to match our width and height of the tile. And what this will do is it'll allow us to tile uh, perfectly to match the grid here. So this tells Unity what this grid should represent in terms of width. So one unit will be 128. Uh, secondly, we'll want to change the filter mode to point if you're using pixel art, that is. If you're using um, vector art or something like that, you can use bilinear or trilinear. But, so now we want to drag this onto the stage. And from here, we'll want to create a prefab from this that we can then load from the resources folder. So what we'll do, we'll grab the grass tile here and we'll drag this into the resources folder. So you can delete that from the stage now. And the second part now is we need to create a holder for the grid we'll be generating. So in the scene view, create empty game object. We'll call this uh, grid holder. And on the pro property inspector for this object, we'll create a new script and call this grid manager. And this will be the script used to, to generate the grid. So he'd create an add and then double click the file here to open in Visual Studio. Okay, so we'll bump up the size here a bit for you guys. So the first thing we'll wanna do is to create a three different variables. So the first one we'll call it private int uh, rows, and we'll say five in this case. Another private int, and this time we'll call it calls, and we'll say eight. And the third one will be a private float. And we'll call this one tile size, and that'll be one. And that'll be used to kind of uh, manage the spacing between the grid items. So in the start function, we will uh, call generate oop, generate grid. Ugh, I've got a new keyboard, so I'm still getting used to the spacing. Uh, so here we can use uh, Unity's autocomplete by hovering over and generate method. So that'll create this method here automatically. So we'll delete this stuff inside. And let's now generate the grid. So we're gonna make a nested for loop. So a for loop with a for loop inside. So if you type for and double tap tab, it'll auto generate the syntax for the for loop. So uh, for clarity, instead of the I, I will maybe write um, row. So row equals zero. And if row is less than rows, which we set over here, then iterate through. And we'll do another one for Coals, so we'll call this one coal. And if coal is less than coals, which is eight, then we will want to in here generate the tile from our resources folder. Um, but rather than just um, loading from our resources folder here every time, which can be a bit expensive, we will do something nifty. So outside the for loop, we'll create a game object and we'll call this one reference tile. 
and here we will cast as a game object and we'll say instantiate instantiate uh, resources dot load and here we'll pass in the name of the grass tile we have in our resources folder so I'll say game object tile cast it as a game object let's say instantiate Oy. And here we're going to point it to the reference tile. And the second parameter is the parent. And in this case, it's the actual uh, grid holder we created, which is uh, this script is assigned to. So we'll just say transform. What's it going on here? Oh, of course. So we'll create uh, a couple of floats here. We'll call one pos x equals call times tile size and the second one we'll call float pos y equals row times and in this case we're going to say negative tile size because um, unity uses a cartesian positioning system so it goes from down to up and here we'll now map the tile with those uh, positions. So we'll say tile.transform.position equals new vector two. And here we'll pass in the pos x and pos y. And finally, we'll outside this for loop, we'll destroy the original reference tile we created. So because we, we don't need that anymore. So I'll say destroy reference tile. Okay, so let's jump back to Unity and run that and see what happens. Boom. Okay, so what I might do just, I might click on the camera here and just change the size to three. Just preview that. Okay, so that's a bit closer, but what we'll need to do is center the grid somehow. So I might, just write a quick uh, positioning algorithm or to um, center that. So let's think about this. Okay, so transform dot position equals new vector. Okay, so what I might do, I might just for because this this could get a bit long. I might just make another two floats and called one grid width and I'll say it's calls times tile size another one called grid h grid height is rows times tile size so this might make it a bit easier to write so here we'll say minus grid y divided by two plus the tile size divided by two. And for the y position, we'll say grid h divided by two. So the, the, the total grid height divided by two minus the tile size divided by two. And why are we doing the tile size divided by two is because the pivot point for the tiles is in the center. So you want to just account for that um, with this. So fingers crossed. Let's see if that works. All right, so that looks okay. What we might do here, we might serialize the uh, fields we've got here just to expose them in the Unity inspector panel. So we've got a serialized field. And we'll jump back to Unity. And here, if we click on the grid holder, you can see we now have access to the um, fields that we've created. So 
I might change the tile size just to demonstrate what this value, value does now. So you see changing the tile size will change the spacing. So we'll go to, if we say 0 0.05. Yeah, cool. So there we have it guys. That's how we create a dynamic grid uh, in Unity using C Sharp. I'll just zoom that out for you guys so you can see the whole script. I can delete the update function because we're not using that. So this is a really good foundation for making larger games using uh, dynamic maps and stuff like that. And in the next tutorial, what I'm thinking of doing is to create an extended version of this where we're actually generating a dynamic map based on a data set, which we can then use to um, pass in different tiles, perhaps have it like a road passing through. And then we'll follow on from that to create a player and we'll move the player around the grid and maybe have some collectibles and things like that. So if you like the sound of that and you found this tutorial useful, please do give it a thumbs up, it really helps. And if you wanna see more game dev tutorials, subscribe to the channel and I'll be sure to bring you some more. Okay guys, all the best, have a nice day.